heart should crumble, I will never stumble. And uh, while the governor made assurances this morning things are back to normal, they're definitely not. The state of emergency was just an hour old. The state of emergency that they've been training for so long to deal with. Who was behind it? What caused it in Seattle? In Critics say the brigade's training goes against one of the founding principles of our country, separation of military and civilian government. Luis Giovoni has our report. They've spent 30 months on the streets of Baghdad. Now the 1st Brigade Combat Team of the Army's 3rd Infantry Division is back in the USA. The Army... If this were Nazi Germany in the 1930s, would you want Adolf Hitler to have these pictures of you? These people are expressing dissent against the U.S. government, dissent against government policies. Look at these faces. How many of these are people you know? I don't want the government having this kind of information about me. I don't want them collecting this kind of information about me or the people that I care about. But they are collecting this information. Why? Some people see the writing on the wall. They have a sense of history and they understand what's probably coming. And so they've taken steps to protect their identities. But when you try to protect your privacy, it just makes the police state that much more curious. If you listen carefully, you can actually hear them talking about who they want pictures of and why. Get the people with the masks. Nothing precipitated this. This was a cold, calculated decision that they made, and this is from the perspective of their own cameras. Concentration camps in America. This is a picture of a camp, I believe, in Nashville, the outskirts. FEMA has activated and is currently staffing its vast network of empty internment camps with armed military personnel. Again, none of this is frontline news. Unknown to most Americans, these large federal facilities are strategically positioned across the U.S. landscape to manage the population in the event of a terrorist attack, a civilian uprising, a health epidemic, large-scale dissent, or an insurrection against the government. Notice this is health epidemic. be a perfect place. Uh, this is one, I believe it's either Fort Dix or it's in, I, th I think that's Fort Dix picture there. Yeah, and this is one in Michigan, picture. Some of these razor-wired facilities have the capability of, de of detaining a million people. There are over 600 concentration camps in the United States. Can you believe? I mean, hey, 600. Well, we can prove it, but most of these camps were built in the 1990s. 
you can reference the following link to verify the point and exactly where these camps are located in every state and the executive orders that will bring this about. There's the link you can go to. Many researchers have cited the existence of numerous UN United Nations railroad cars that have been built by independent contractors in the United States. One of them is Gunderson Steel. These cars can hold dozens of prisoners and have on numerous occasions been shown to have 135 human shackles in each car. Many of them are also equipped with guillotines. These would be used by FEMA for prisoner transport to detention camps. There's some pictures of them. Ever seen anything like that? Well, those are, that's some pictures of these particular cars, train cars. Upon the instigation of martial law, FEMA's infamous red and blue list would target millions of Americans marked for priority arrest. These lists would determine the location of your camp and your fate. These facilities, many in remote areas across our country, are set up to become concentration of detention camps, complete with gas chambers, for resistors and dissidents. Generally speaking, they're set up for dissenters who will not go along with the New World Order. The resistors are gun owners who refuse to give up their weapons. The dissidents are Christians, patriots and constitutionalists. These camps are set up. I've seen many of them. The boxcar gas chambers. The boxcar gas chamber building fence is marked with special red-blue zone signs. This corresponds to the mission of the red-blue lists under martial law. This will become a death camp. They're only going to handle Category 1 and 2 red and blue people there. This boxcar facility will be used for execution. One of the barns is large enough to put four boxcars into. There are powered vents on the top of the barn to vent the gas out of the building after the boxcars have been fumigated. All of the buildings have newly installed 6-inch gas pipes and furnaces installed in all railroad barns. FEMA has allocated $6 million to make the walls and roofs of the buildings airtight. Under martial law, this facility could be immediately used as an SS-style termination gas chamber. There's a um, double deck of trains that have been built by Gunners and Steel. 300,000 of them. They're double decker trains. There's nothing but benches and chains and shackles. And they're, and they're highly vented on the side for air passage. Because all we're going to do is roll these trains into these detention camp chambers, gas people, get them out, roll the next train in, and just. It's, it's, it's a very simple. Really. It's about citizens believe that. The United Nations is taking over whole blocks of uh, counties in uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, yeah. and uh, some of them, they believe that we are going to the but... concentration camp, and they're going to give our army uh, to Russia and all that baloney. The issue is, we live in an interdependent world. We have to cooperate with people. We're better off than we do. We're better off with the, with NATO. We're better off with the United Nations. We're better off when these countries can work together. So.